Hello good day viewers. In this tutorial we are going to find a solution to this interesting complex equation. We would like to find that value or values of x that can satisfy the equation 1 plus root 3 i divided by 2 all to the power of x plus 1 minus root 3 i divided by 2 all to the power of x the whole of this equal to 1. This question was posted by Garba Isa long ago in our Facebook page. Alright let's get started. I would like to transform this complex number under the parentheses into its polar form. This is 1 divided by 2 plus root 3 divided by 2i, right? So we can write it as 1 divided by 2 plus root 3i divided by 2 whole to the power of x. We move to the other parentheses. We have 1 divided by 2 minus root 3i divided by 2 all to the power of x and this is equal to 1. All right, to transform this into polar form, we know that 1 over 2 is the same thing as cosine of pi divided by 3. So we have cosine of pi divided by 3 as what? 1 over 2. I should know that sine of pi divided by 3 will give us root 3 divided by 2. So let me write i before sine i sine of pi divided by 3. Remember to raise it to the power of x. Then we move to the other parentheses plus cosine of negative pi divided by 3 will give us 1 over 2. So we have cosine of negative pi divided by 3. Then you should also note that sine of negative pi divided by 3 will give us negative root 3 divided by 2. So we have i sine of negative pi divided by 3. Remember to raise it to the power of x. This is equal to 1. If you want to confirm, just take your calculator. Press cosine of negative pi divided by 3. It will be equal to this. And the sine of negative pi divided by 3 will give us negative root 3 divided by 2. All right, let's continue. And according to the Moeber theorem, it stated that this exponent can always multiply the arguments. So let's do that. So we have cosine of pi divided by 3 times x, which is going to give us x pi divided by 3, right? So we have x pi divided by 3. Then we have plus i sine of x pi divided by 3, right? x pi divided by 3. Then we move to the other parentheses plus we do the same thing. We take the whole of this argument and multiply by x. That will give us negative x pi divided by 3. So we have cosine of negative x pi divided by 3. Then plus i sine of negative x pi divided by 3 the whole of this equal to 1. All right, let's continue simplifying. The only thing I would like to change here is this and this. I will leave this one as it is. What do I mean here? Remember that if you have a cosine of negative theta, this is the same thing as cosine of theta. Why? Because cosine is an even function. But for sine of negative theta, it will be negative sine of the positive angle theta, right? Because sine is an odd function. So I will remove this negative sign because without negative, it will still be the same value. Remember that I told you cosine of pi divided by 3 is 1 over 2. Likewise, cosine of negative pi divided by 3 is also 1 over 2 because cosine is an even function. So the only thing I would like to do here is to remove this negative sign. And this negative sign will multiply this to make it negative. So let me just copy this and replace it. All right, so you can see that I have removed this negative sign here. And this negative sign has been transferred back to I sign of the positive angle. So now let us collect the like terms. You can see that this and this are like terms. And this will cancel this because one is negative and the other one is positive. So the only two terms we would like to add here is this and this. So let's add them together. Since they are the same, we have two of them. We have two of 
cosine of x pi divided by 3. And this is equal to 1 because this term and this term has cancelled already. All right, let's divide both sides by 2. We have cosine of x pi divided by 3 to the left equal to 1 over 2. Now, next question is, on which quadrant do we have cosine of an angle to be positive? Cosine is positive in the first and the fourth quadrants. So we could have another solution, which is in the form of cosine of 2 pi minus that angle, which is x pi divided by 3. And this will still be equal to 1 over 2. So these are the two solutions we are going to obtain. If you are conversant with unicycle, you will understand clearly what I mean here. Okay, now let us solve the two uh, equations separately. Let me start with the first one to the left. Uh, we know that cosine of pi divided by 3 is equal to 1 over 2. And hence we can say that, or we can take cosine inverse of both sides. It is the same thing as x pi divided by 3 equal to pi divided by 3 here. And uh, you should know that Cosine is periodic in every given 2 pi. So we can add multiples of 2 pi. 2 pi times k, for which k is an integer. It could be 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, and in that order. So let's multiply every single term by 3 to clear the fractions. We have x pi here if multiplied by 3. This is equal to pi if multiplied by 3. Plus 2 times 3 is 6 pi k. Next, divide every single term by pi. x pi divided by pi is x, and this is equal to pi divided by pi is 1, plus 6 pi k divided by pi is 6k. So we have obtained one of the solutions. Let us move to the other equation. The same thing here, cosine of pi divided by 3 is 1 over 2. Therefore, by taking cosine inverse of both sides, you have 2 pi minus x pi divided by 3 is equal to pi divided by 3, right? Uh, you can simply switch these terms. x pi divided by 3 is equal to what? 2 pi minus pi divided by 3. And don't forget to add the multiples of 2 pi k. 2 pi, multiples of 2 pi. Multiply every single term by 3. We have x pi here equal to 3 times 2 pi is 6 pi minus this time 3 is just pi. Then plus 2 times 3 is 6 pi k. Let's further simplify. We have x pi to be equal to 6 pi minus pi is 5 pi then plus 6 pi k. Divide every single term by pi, we have x equal to 5 plus 6k, second solution. So how can we test these two solutions in our main equation to see whether this is true? I will only test one for you, and you can test the rest. I told you that k here is an integer. Let me even write it here. k belongs to the set of integers. It could be positive or negative integer. So let me take one integer and test. If k is 0, when k is equal to 0, you can see that by plugging in 0 here, you have 6 times 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. So x equal to 1 is a solution. If x equal to 1 is a solution, can we test it here? Let me test it here. All right. If x is equal to 1, by replacing x with 1, we have only the fractions. And you can see that half, 1 over 2, plus 1 over 2 is 1. So we have 1. Then this plus this, because 1 is positive and the other one is negative, it will give us 0 and 0 plus 1 is 1 to the right. And hence, x equal to 1 is a solution. And you can test for others. In case you have that programming calculator, you can be substituting the values of k equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and test them. If k is 1, we have 6 times 1. Uh, is 6 plus 1 is 7. It means x equal to 7 is also a solution. Just plug it into your calculator, replace x with 7, and see whether if you simplify the left-hand side, you are going to get 1 in that order. I think this is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. 
do share to your learning colleagues and don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel for more exciting videos